The Intel 14 Gen Core Processors aka the Raptor Leg Refresh are finally here. The new CPUs will work on existing LGA 1700 socket motherboards, in example the 600 series and 700 series chipset as long as the BIOS is updated. As for the Z790 motherboards refresh, aside from the different VRM designs and other QL enhancements by each of the board partners, the most notable difference is the use of Wi-Fi 7. But we will leave that for another day as our focus this time is the Intel Core i9-14900K itself. In this test, we have compared the 4900K against the 3900K as well as both the 7950X and 7950X 3D from AMD. So let's start with the thermals and power draw as I think it is important to know what kind of cooling solution you should be using if you are going to upgrade to the 4900K. While the specification shows the maximum power draw at 253 watts, we are actually seeing a higher power draw that goes up to 310 watts during our test and the CPU is constantly hitting 102 degrees Celsius during heavy load tests even though we are using a 360 AIO cooler. So you will want to set the PL1 and PL2 lower if you are not using a powerful cooling solution to tame the 1400K. In our case, we have set the PL1 and PL2 to 210 watts, which in the end gives us a peak load temperature at around 92 degrees Celsius throughout our test. You can of course set it higher or lower depending on the cooling solution you have. And before we move on to the benchmark numbers, here is the list of components we have used for both our Intel and AMD test bench for your reference. Starting off with the synthetic benchmarks, I can say that the 1400K is not exactly overpowered the rest of the CPUs we have used for the test. In 7-zip, the 1400K is performing at about 11% better than the 3900K in the compression performance. On the AMD side, the Ryzen 9 7950X and 7950X 3D still outperforms both the Intel CPUs thanks to the extra cores and threads. The extra cores and threads do have its advantage as we can see better overall scores in benchmarks like Blender Benchmarks, UL ProSion Benchmark Suite, V-Ray 5, and W-Prime 1024M. There are of course Test that shows having extra cores and threads doesn't mean that everything is well. For example, Cinebench R23 and Geekbench 3. In 3D Mark Firestrike, although the overall scores are higher on both the AMD CPUs, the Time Spy CPU score shows a much better result on the Intel CPUs, especially the 4900K that is about 18% better than the 7950X. Now, moving on to the game's benchmarks. While you can still use your existing DDR5 memory kit with the 4900K, Intel is recommending the use of higher frequency kits like DDR5 8000 Plus if possible for the best experience. And we can actually see DDR5 8266 Plus support on the new Z790 refresh motherboard specs sheets as well. We are still using DDR5 6000CL30 for the base test just so we can have the data as a base reference for those who are using earlier DDR5 memory kits. In 1080p resolution, the 4900K is performing at about 3-9% to better than the 3900K while performing mostly on par and sometimes better than the 7950X and 7950X 3D. As we scale up to 1440p resolution, much to our surprise, the 4900K performs better than the rest of the CPUs in majority of the title we have tested. The performance gap is somewhere at about 4 to 8%. Similar result can also be seen in 4K resolution as well, where the 4900K yields a better performance at about 6 to 8% compared to the 3900K. Judging from the performance numbers above, 
I would say the 4900K is indeed another powerful CPU by Intel, but is it a worthy upgrade and should you buy it? If you are coming from a 3900K or perhaps the 7950X, the 14900K will not be a reasonable upgrade unless you're into Wi-Fi 7 upgrade and some of the QOL enhancements offered by each of the board partners. In example, better VRM designs, better heatsink for M.2, or perhaps better memory overclocking and support for DDR5-8266 Plus memories. As for those who are still rocking on the older Ryzen 9 5950X or the Intel Core i9-11900K, mainly on the older gen CPUs, the 4900K is definitely a viable option for upgrades since the performance gap is much more significant. Just that, you will be forking out quite a lot of fortune to make this big jump. And yes, that's it for our initial impression of the Intel Core i9-14900K. Do let us know what do you think of the new CPUs. Do you think it's a worthy upgrade or will you just keep the current generation and wait for the next coming generation? Do let us know in the comment section down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.